Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome to episode 5 in our series on foam kit bashing. We are transforming a Freewing Mirage 2000 into an Israeli Kafir. And in fact, in this video, we'll be doing all of the final finish work on the airplane, adding some panel lines and some weathering. In our last episode, you know, we covered painting the four-tone desert camouflage and then applying the markings. To see that video, you can click on the icon in the upper right corner. I've got a link there. Now, as mentioned, in this episode, we're covering panel lines and weathering. These are two things that can really make or break a scale model, and very often we can get too heavy with either. And so my hope here is to give some pointers, you know, for adding some realistic and effective looking panel lines uh, and weathering that's easy to do. These are some techniques that work for me and are pretty simple to employ and that I actually use on my competition models also. You know, the truth is, there's so many different techniques you can turn to. So, you know, these are just a few that I regularly use. Ultimately, the best techniques are the ones that you like and give you the results you're looking for. You know, so don't be afraid to experiment and try different things here. First things first though, you know, to get started, we need to apply our panel lines. So, let's go! For applying panel lines, we're simply applying all of them using a mechanical pencil. This works excellent in this case because the pencil lines, when applied, are darker than all of the colors on the airplane. So as a result, you can get a really fine and nice looking panel line. Any color scheme where this is the case, you know, pencil does work quite well. I'm using a mechanical pencil with a half millimeter diameter lead. Uh, and this is so that we get consistent width lines that aren't too wide. Also, you know, a harder lead is preferred uh, so as to avoid smears as you handle the airplane and avoid applying panel lines just way too heavily. One thing to note is that this technique really only works when applying lines onto a hardened surface. You know, the polyacrylic hardens up the airframe well and so provides a surface that is conducive for this. You know, this is not something you'd realistically be able to apply to a painted bare foam surface. You know, so just a heads up on that. In applying the panel lines themselves, I simply used a 3D drawing and transferred the essence of what's on that drawing to the model. What I mean is that I didn't measure and scale the locations exactly from the drawing or anything like that. I simply went with a looks about right approach. My goal was to simulate the full size, not replicate it. You know, if this were a competition project, then I'd spend much more time scaling to match the drawing uh, and pictures of the full-sized airplane. For some of the smaller detail shapes like axis panels and things like that, you know, I used a template that I have for squares and circles which made those items easy to make. For long continuous lines, I used a long ruler where I could or I used 3M fine line tape uh, that was applied to the surface. The tape is thick enough to create an edge that you can draw against, so that's an easy thing that you can use. I also used this for many of the radial lines around the nose and fuselage. I typically have various widths of fine line tape on hand as it's really good stuff. It can be used for more than just painting. Also, you know, for larger width lines like the rudder separation or anything like that, I simply just applied the lines darker and wider. Basically drawing lines about 1 16th inch apart and then filling in between those with the pencil. I also drew in some of the vents that are all over the airplane. You know, we'll use our airbrush shading to simulate some depth to them. Once all of the panel lines were done, I applied a light clear coat over the airplane which protects all of that panel line work that we've done so that way we can apply the weathering on top of it. I use a non-yellowing lacquer clear coat uh, which is the same stuff that I use on my larger airplanes too. I want to point out that, you know, if this were a competition model, then I would have done much the same process, but once the lines were drawn out on the airframe, I would use a double-ended scribe to actually scribe the panel lines into the paint. You can also do this into primer if you choose to put panel lines down before you actually paint the airplane. Uh, this then creates a fine groove uh, in the paint versus a drawn line and then that provides a little extra dimension to the model because then you get shadows in those panel lines and things like that. Also it helps uh, you know the panel lines take washes really well too. For small axis panels and things like that I like to make many raised panels out of vinyl. Uh, you can make them out of even aluminum tape things like that. You know for a camouflage scheme like this I would have applied those before paint but in some cases I actually like to spray the panels separately and apply them after paint as the tone of those painted panels vary just slightly to the tone of the model and that gives it a more uneven look which adds to the realism since you know airplanes rarely ever uh, weather perfectly uniform.
All right, so we have all of our panel lines down now. The final step in the finishing process is to weather the airplane and make it look like a beautifully used warfighter. I want to say up front here that, you know, when it comes to weathering, less is more. If you step away looking at the airplane thinking it's too dirty, then it's too dirty. So there's a fine line between too much and not enough. It's all about simulating a full-sized airplane too. So do some research, see how dirty the airplanes were, you know, and use that as kind of your inspiration. My approach to weathering is to simulate and not replicate because you'll never be able to replicate years of sun and operation that these aircraft have to bear day in and day out. Also, I can't stress this enough, all weathering should be done inside under artificial light. If you do any of this outside in the, the bare sunlight, it may look good outside, but as soon as you bring it inside, I guarantee that the weathering will be too heavy because the sun, what happens is it just washes everything out, all the effects of the colors that you're applying. On the flip side though, you know, if it looks good inside, it'll look just as good outside. You know, it really does work that way. So highly recommended, do all your weathering indoors under artificial light. Now for a fighter jet, the dirtiest part of the airplane is always the underside. Also, these airplanes typically get dirtier as you go further back to the tail. So with this in mind, the first place I'd like to start is applying oil streaking and stains using an acrylic wash on the underside at the back of the airplane. I like to use folk art acrylics that you can get from Michaels or Hobby Lobby, you know, with my primary go-to color being raw umber. This is a dark reddish brown color that simulates oils and hydraulic streaks and stains wonderfully. Uh, the other item I have on hand is Tamiya acrylic thinner because if at any time the acrylic gets applied in a way that you don't like, it can be cleared off completely uh, using that to me a thinner. Having a paper towel with some thinner on it helps smear the acrylic paint also. Uh, you know, so for application, I like to take a flat and kind of wide paintbrush and apply the acrylic paint along the panel line or any area where I want a stain or a streak on the airframe. From there, I wipe the acrylic paint off in the direction of the airflow with a paper towel. Usually it has a little acrylic thinner soaked into it to help smear the paint and create a streaky kind of stain on the surface. The beauty here is that if at any time something is applied that we don't like, it can be completely cleaned up with the acrylic thinner without any risk of lifting up the paint. This was continued all around the airframe but with restraint. Heavy stains and streaking were only applied to the underside. Uh, and then on the top side, I only applied a streak here and there from the smaller access panels or from hinges, uh, things like that. Also, in some cases on the fuselage, I wiped the acrylic wash off downwards towards the ground since fuselages typically collect weathering in that direction from sitting in the elements. You know, it's all about small touches and subtleties on the top side. I only use the raw umber color as I found this really gives the look I want. You can experiment with different colors and see what you like. Once all of the washes were down all around the airframe, I finished it all up with some airbrush shading. I simply used some very thinned out black. The consistency is like dirty thinner. I keep it this thin because it is easier to add more shading than to take away. So if you make a pass and you want it a little darker, then simply make another pass using the airbrush. So using that paint, I shaded over all of the panel lines, you know, to darken them up slightly. Also, small panels, I shaded in the centers to darken them in a little bit. And in some cases, added some streaking too with the airbrush and aligned horizontal to the direction of the flow. Now we had mentioned the vents earlier. So during this process, you know, I used post-it notes to mask around all of the vents that I had drawn on the surface. I then masked one by one each of the louvers and darkened one side, basically painting the paper, not the actual surface. And, and what this did, this gave the illusion of depth since you know we're not physically adding vents into the surface, uh, but by adding the shading, it makes it look like there's actually some depth there. Uh, I did the same thing to the rudder too, you know, to give the illusion of depth around the hinge line. Now once all of the shading was done, stepping back and looking at the airplane, you know, the black felt just a little too prevalent all around, all that shading. So I took a fine Scotch-Brite pad and burnished down all of the surfaces on the model. This helped tone it down and even it all out. Once I was happy with it all, then I sprayed a final clear coat and she was done. So here's the finished kefir, you know, and it came out so much better than I expected. The airplane really looks the part beautifully and it comes across very scale looking. 
All of that work really pays off in, in the finish and the combination of the washes and the shading really portray a realistic finish. You know, these techniques are easy to do and can be applied on virtually any aircraft type, whether foam or fiberglass. So experiment, you know, try it out, because the only way to, to improve at this is to, you know, just practice, be fearless, you know, try different things and, and develop those skills that really work for you. Now, all we got to do is fly this thing. Right, guys that's it for this video thanks so much for watching I hope you found this video helpful these techniques are some that you know I use on my competition airplanes which include my a7 and Mirage 3 RS and so give them a try and remember that you know less is more on weathering also we're trying to simulate and not replicate so don't worry about having that perfect oil streak or anything like that you want to capture the essence of the full-size airplane again the more you practice weathering the better the outcome will be. So give it a shot. You'll love the results. And as mentioned, you can try this weathering on any type of aircraft medium. All right, so now the airplane is done, like done. So in our next episode, we'll have a full flight review. I've gone through and swapped out a few things, including the radio and the batteries, uh, and also added some extra coolness uh, to which you'll see in the next video. So be sure to subscribe and also go to the rcgeek.com as I have a full article there on what we've covered here with links to everything. Thanks so much for watching guys and until next time, go weather your airplanes and I hope to see you at the field.